<laughs> how humorless you are. I'm being escorted out of the country. They tell me pack my bag. Back to Texas. I like chemistry so much. In high school, I took chemistry one and chemistry two. Unfortunately, they were the same. <laughs> but to get the academic diploma, I had to take the chemistry over again. Okay. All right, let's uh, start with our discussion of the uh, CIP. In preparation okay. for the budget, uh, we have begun to work on the capital improvement program from last year or for this coming year. This evening, we'd like to begin by giving you an overview of the status of your current year's projects. Then we'll move into projects proposed in the first year of the new capital improvement budget. And then also end by showing you new projects that are in the five-year program for the first time. We'll have a presentation from the Public Works folks. So, Greg, I think you're going to lead us off. Okay. Well, good evening. Glad to be here. And uh, what you're going to see is a listing, uh, as we go through these slides, of the capital projects that are underway this fiscal year. And by underway, what I mean is that we're either in the process of doing some preliminary planning, we are doing some preliminary engineering, or we're doing design, or we're constructing the project. And like in past updates, what you're going to see with the projects are colors. And tonight you're going to see green which, uh, with the, a lot of the projects, and that green means the project is progressing. And it, there's a few that you're going to see some yellow, and that, pro that means that the project that has the yellow is progressing, but it's not progressing quite as fast as we would like. It's not quite where we want it to be. And then, uh, unlike past updates, you're not going to see any red, which red means that the project's been canceled or uh, is, been, is stopped for some reason. So with that said, what you're going to see are 35 projects. And you can see the split there. We got a fire project, a police project, 25 public services project, recreation projects, a community programs project, and two transportation projects. So we're going to go through it by department. And so the first one that you, first two you see, are Fire Station Two and the Center for Public Safety. And the Fire Station Two is currently under construction at the corner of Gum Branch and Sandy Drive. And what you see is a yellow there. And what you see is that we're about 10, 20 percent into the construction of the project. And it's behind. It's behind because of the wet weather and poor soil conditions that we've encountered on the site. The project, we were anticipating it being completed around July, but what we think we're looking at right now is a project completed in the neighborhood of September, maybe October, but we're thinking September. And the Center for Public Safety, it's listed as a police department project, and while it's a police department project, when it's all done, there'll be fire and police personnel there. And as you know, that project was started in July of 2012, the construction. And where we stand right now is the project's about 65% complete, and we're still expecting to move personnel into the building in July, and then we are expecting to wrap the project up around October. And by wrap it up, I mean that involves demolishing the existing police building and building a parking lot in its place. And if you haven't been by uh, Court Street, they did lay some asphalt, I understand, last week. That's correct. I think uh, they did that in the middle of the snowstorm, but... Uh, it was just before. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to move on to the public services projects. And I'll, in each one of these slides, I'm just going to talk about one or two because I know you've been through quite a discussion already. And if, if I don't talk about the one you're interested in, certainly stop me and you can ask questions and I'll try to answer. But the first one I'm going to talk about is, of course, the one with the yellow. And that is the uh, public services uh, complex where we had a project or we have a project where we plan to do some additional buildings, some sheds, uh, do some uh, additional parking out there, some stormwater improvements, uh, parking for our buses, and a bus wash. Well, we bid the project, and it came in well over budget. Then, you know, we repackaged the project, and we rebid it again, and it still came in over the, over the budget. So now what we're doing and what we've been doing is working with our architect to try to make the project match our budget. So we're still working with them and we're also uh, dealing a little bit with uh, Duke Progress and their uh, easements across the site. So we're still 
moving, but we're just not moving as quickly as we'd like. One comment on, on that, actually two comments. One of the things that the initial study suggested is that we go back and, and really reanalyze how we're using our current space. And because the bids have come in just beyond our ability to fund, we have gone back and asked each department to look at ceiling height and how we can really do inventory. And we are now able to tell you that we are going to be reducing the, the square footage needed because we're going to get into taller storage racks. Now, I have to tell you that, that Ron and Wally and Pete and Greg and a lot of people, Johnny Stiltner, mm -hmm. Kerry, a lot of people worked on this to come up with some innovative ways to find a, a solution to reduce that project. So not only are you looking at, at uh, the engineer working on it, your staff have been working on it to actually reduce the scope. We are still significantly uh, away, though, from uh, seeing this project completed. I will also remind you that when you authorize the purchase of the A and B tire, part of that is to also supplant the need for some of this larger facility over at Public Works, especially for storage. And we're in the process right now, beginning to to occupy uh, some of that A and B building. The other one that I want to talk about briefly on the sheet there is the New Bridge Streetscape. Um, I think a, a while back that uh, you had the opportunity to look at some concept plans for uh, New Bridge that involved maybe some medians down the center, some bulb out landscape areas, so on and so forth. And what you were looking at were essentially projects that were probably on the order of a half million dollars. Well, certainly we don't have that kind of money right now for that project. And so what has been going on, and, and you should notice as you go down uh, New Bridge from here down to Warlick Street, is that uh, staff has been uh, using the money available to uh, purchase crepe myrtles, nandina, brick chips, and what we've been doing is uh, cutting sections out of the sidewalk, planting crepe myrtles, planting nandina, and uh, uh, adding the brick chips where we've cut out the sidewalk. Uh, right now we have some more at Nandina to, to plant. We have a few more brick chips to place, but we think the, we'll be wound up with this phase of the project uh, around spring. Then, moving on to uh, a set of projects we call the Piney Green Road projects. These are projects that are associated with the Piney Green road widening project. The first one you see there involves NCDOT relocating some of our existing sewers that they exist between Country Club Drive and Marine Boulevard. The sidewalk installation will be done. Uh, what that involves is sidewalks going in along Piney Green Road within those areas of the road that are within our corporate limits. That'll probably come near the end of the widening project. The bigger project, of course, is one we've talked about in the past, and that is pro it's essentially two projects where we're installing, constructing uh, both force mains and gravity sewers along Piney Green Road, roughly from Regalwood Drive to Burnett Street. And the on-right-of-way sewers and force mains are being constructed by NCDOT's contractor. The off-right-of-way work, which involves the city's pump station at Poplar Branch and on Wassa's outfall line down to their Hunters Creek pump station, is being constructed under a separate contract uh, that is a contract that exists between a contractor and uh, on Wassa, and we're doing reimbursement. We're, we're paying, re we're reimbursing on Wassa for the work that is going to end up being the city's. And right now, we're thinking all the sewer work is going to be complete uh, roughly uh, late spring, early summer. So that's progressing along. The uh, widening project, I'm told, however, that uh, is scheduled for completion around April 2016. <coughs> then you'll see in public services, we have a streets project and a sidewalks, a couple of sidewalk projects. And the streets project is our annual uh, street rehabilitation project. And where we are with that is, we have just gotten our geotechnical reports back for the 24 streets that are to be part of this project. And what those reports tell us are that the project is going to be a mix of uh, rebuilding streets and of simply milling and overlaying some other streets. 
quite frankly, it looks like the, the, the project's going to be a little more weighted towards the rebuilding of the streets than milling and overlaying. <laughs> But the ones that we mill and overlay certainly would be cheaper than if we were going to have to rebuild it. And additionally, what the uh, geotechnical reports are telling us is that we might not have to rebuild to the depth that we have done in the past, which could also result in some savings. So where we are with that right now is that we are working to have uh, the uh, project bid and ready to go in the, in the, uh, when it warms up, you know, roughly around April so we can get started on that. Then here I want to talk to, uh, about uh, the, uh, the sewer, sewer ones and what you'll see there is an inflow and infiltration project and that of course is a project uh, undertaken to try to eliminate water going into our sewer system because we don't like treating you know rainwater it, it takes away from our capacity and the project uh, has involved uh, replacing short segments of sewer lining some sewers and rebuilding and lining manholes the work has been conducted at Hargett Street Steeplechase Court College Street Coont Circle Zach Circle Sophia Drive and in and around Henderson Drive and the work's about 80% complete, and the value of the work is about ranges in the range, I think, of about $1.2 million. Where it stands right now is we've taken a break because the last bit of the work is going to involve <coughs> replacing four segments of sewer in, in Henderson Drive between Doris Avenue and Davis Street. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait till the school systems in, in spring break before we try to undertake that work so as to be as you know as provide as little inconvenience as possible so we're in a sort of in a pause mode right now on that project except for a few little odds and ends the other project which it's listed as two there but it's essentially one project that I, I need to talk about of course has the yellow it's the Parkwood region, regional lift station and the western trunk sewer and we've talked about this project a lot over the years and this is a project where we were going to we're, going to con we're planning to construct a new regional lift station that receives sewer through the western trunk sewer, which is part of the project. And that western trunk sewer is intended to receive sewer from north of Western Boulevard and eventually north of Western Boulevard all the way out to Marine Boulevard. And you see the yellow there because as we've discussed in the past, we had planned to uh, route a force main from that lift station through Burton Park and through the main drive that goes through Burton Park. We went to the county and we told them what we were doing. We made a request to do that and they, I guess, politely declined. And they, in turn, said, we're willing to let you route your sewer around the perimeter of the park. Well, that's going to cost us significantly more dollars. So what we've been doing since that time is looking at alternative routes. And where we are right now is we've, we've identified a few and we are doing some property research relative to that, but even so, the project is still gonna be more expensive than we in initially anticipated. Back up just a second. What did you say you're doing on Doris Avenue? Uh, on, it's Henderson between Doris and Yes, we're, we're going to replace it. No, 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 no. Well, you know our philosophy, pave it, dig it up, yeah. repave it, dig it up. I've been at school. <laughs> I will mention on the uh, regional trunk system, the western trunk system, one of the things that is, uh, is fortunate in a way is that growth in that corridor has slowed. If the growth had continued like it was two years ago, we would be out of capacity. Uh, we are, we do have enough capacity for the commercial development that is occurring up there in the way of Lowe's and the other uh, stores that are coming in. We have some capacity for additional residential up there. Uh, so we're, we're blessed that the market has slowed. This is a project though that we are continuing to try to find easement approaches so that hopefully within the next six to eight, nine months, we're going to be able to get back to final design. Moving on and looking at a few more of the sewer projects, we've got some more yellow. Um, Memorial Lift Station. Um, 
that project started out as a project to replace the deteriorated lift station there's right now. During the process, what we determined was that we could basically do away with that lift station, that we could put in a gravity sewer and end up not having to have a lift station that we had to pay for the maintenance and operation of. So we've, we've undertaken that design process, and the reason that you see the yellow is because we've been slowed, because we've been negotiating easements uh, through a uh, tract of land that is owned by Duke Progress as well as with another property owner or two. So we're not exactly where we would like to be. We were hoping that we would be going to construction right now, but we're just not there because sometimes the process of dealing with easements slows you down. Uh, more often than not is what we've come to find out. And then the Brookview Force Main replacement has yellow also. That's a FY13 project that started out as a project to put in a new force main underneath the marsh that is adjacent to Brookview Pump Station. It's the marsh between Brookview Pump Station and I guess it's the end of Maple Street, about 1,400 linear feet of, of force main. We undertook to replace the uh, existing old force main that's on wood piers because we had some concerns about its stability. During the design process, we came to realize when dealing with CAMA that they were going to put some stipulations on us that was going to result in additional cost over and above the $600,000 we had budgeted for the pro project, quite a bit more. So in the meantime, uh, Pete Deaver's staff undertook a project to stabilize the existing force main that was on piers. And so it became, I guess, a less pressing project for us uh, to really get that, that, uh, that line in. And because Pete was able to stabilize it, what we ended up doing was we started doing some testing. We tested some of the piers. We tested uh, the uh, pipe that's on the piers. And what we came to understand from our testing was that we could probably undertake a project that would extend the life of that existing force main by another 10 to 15 years. And we could do that by doing some various uh, types of reinforcing of the existing piers. So where we are right now is we need to do a little more testing just to be absolutely sure that indeed we can do that in a, a, a little bit of calculation, a little more calculations, but right now we're feeling pretty good that we'll be able to uh, do a, if you will, rehabilitation project that will be far under the $600,000 budget and give us another 10 to 15 years on that force main. And then uh, Hargett Street, that project has just uh, recently been completed. Of course, that project was a project to put in a, a new water line underneath Hargett Street to replace the one that was in pretty poor condition prior to NCDOT rebuilding that road. As I understand it, NCDOT is hoping to uh, proceed with their project to uh, rebuild the road in March or April, and I know that we're all going to be looking forward to that. Now, DOT has, in fact, awarded the bid, is my understanding. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes, it is. It, and it's, it's, a large, it's a large contract, and there are a lot of different places that the contractor can go, but NCDOT is asking the contractor to do Hargett Street first. So they're hopeful with that request that the contractor will undertake that part of their work first. We learn anything from having that contractor do such a miserable job of patching Hargett Street? Well, we have I been mean, after him. Zones. I know. In Afghanistan, they were in better shape than that Hargett Street. I, I agree. And we, it's not for lack of trying on our part to get him to go back and fix it. He has done some milling, some repatching, some repaving. It's still not perfect, but we have been after him uh, from the day he first paved it. Mr. Bittner, on that particular street, a comment was made that the uh, only good area that improved traffic circulation during the ice and snow was Hargett Street <laughs> because it became smoother then than any other time of the year. <laughs> the police department hasn't issued any speeding tickets on Hargett for over a year and a half now because you can't go with their So it was a successful project. <laughs> 
speed humps. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only one, other one I might mention is the Zach Circle and Sophia Drive. That's a project where on, on those two, at those two locations, we're going to re be replacing two inch water lines with six inch water lines to improve pressure and flow in that area. And that, you know, that's of course helpful when it comes to fire protection. We're expecting to advertise uh, this project for bid, uh, put it out for bid next week. Greg, I've noticed, I've just happened to be over there, but I noticed the roads all opened up in that area for the sewer. Are you gonna go right back in there before they're repatched or is it gonna be a different location for that water line? Uh, we're we're going to do um, we're going to need to patch back over the, the the water line. But when you do the sewer, you know what you have to do what you have to do is provide a separation of ten feet between the water and sewer. So what we'll try to do, and then dependent upon the soils, is have you know sort of another trench that we have to patch as opposed to one big old open street. Sometimes it depends upon the soil though, and you know you you end up going a little bit further than you hope. Still in public services and now on stormwater, you can see we have uh, one project and that is the downtown centralized stormwater uh, project. And that project <coughs> is going to involve constructing four stormwater wetlands. Two of the wetlands are to be constructed at Sturgeon City and one is to be, or the other two are to be constructed adjacent to Poplar Street. What I'll say about the ones at Sturgeon City is one of them is going to receive stormwater uh, from the uh, Environmental Education Center, while the other one will be there to um, be available for future development of the uh, Sturgeon City site. And where we are on that is we've essentially finished design. We've had to make one minor change on the on in our design at the request of the funding agency as you as you recall this is i think a, a state revolving fund revolving fund loan project and they ask us to make one small change in our plans and we're doing that right now and once we do that we'll be ready to go to bid on that there's actually some i'll call bad news on the overall project what we tried to create was a downtown stormwater pond so that as redevelopment occurred off-site uh, private property could discharge to this facility that was off-site after more than a year and literally hundreds of hours of staff time and tens of thousands of dollars with consultants we just finally gave up Diener was Diener just wouldn't go there they wanted us to build a facility but they would give us no credit for any development discharging into it it just didn't make sense for us financially so we have scaled back that what what is really unfortunate there is we had an opportunity to do something that would help water quality and help redevelopment and i'm going to be very blunt with you the bureaucracy of deaner prevented that from happening So now we move out of public services and on to uh, recreation and parks. And the one that I'll talk about there is the Jacksonville Landing because if uh, you have looked over in the triangular area that's formed by New River, Marine Boulevard, and Old Bridge, you'll see there's a lot of stuff going on over there. And what that is is the first phase of Jacksonville Landing, which as you know is the uh, boat ramp. And what's going on right now is the in the water work phase and that in the water work involves actually building the ramp and putting the bulkhead in. That work is scheduled to be completed and has to be completed by April. Once that is done then we'll move to the next phase which is the site work which is grading, building the parking lot, putting in the landscaping. And then the overall project is supposed to be open to the public on September 1st. So that, we're looking forward to that. The other one that I'll mention just real quickly is uh, Phillips Park. Phillips Park is a, pro a part of the okay. restroom part of that project. Yes. No. Yes. Is it, yes. it going to be built? Yes. They oh, are. Yes. yes. I know we had a footprint. There's for a it. provision for a visitor center to be part of that at a later date. The footprint. Yes. Footprint. Yes. Footprint. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. In Phillips Park, Phillips Park is a Part F funded project 
and it's a project where we're going to rework Phillips Park. We're going to end up with a new picnic shelter, a new larger, nice uh, children's playground area. We're going to have a new nice restroom building. We're going to have an amphitheater and we're going to have a canoe and kayak boat launch as well as improved parking and improved traffic circulation in the park. And where we are with that is that uh, we've just completed a, a schematic layout for the site. And what we expect to happen next is with this schematic layout we're going to develop some renderings if you will and we're going to do a public information session about the the look of that of the park in the future so we're moving along with that I think fairly well and remember we are going to be funding that and developing it over a three-year period with the assistance of the grant from the state is that in-house design no, no. We, we've involved a company that uh, has both uh, uh, civil mechanical electrical as well as landscape services landscape architecture Community, I guess this is my last slide concerning the uh, projects, and I, what I'll talk about here just really briefly is uh, Sturgeon City uh, Environmental Education Center. Um, we're finished with the design, and I think you you know that uh, the state of North Carolina is doing some uh, testing at Sturgeon City uh, relative to the uh, old landfill that's out there, and what we did was we said that we would wait until that testing was complete before we proceeded so that they could uh, uh, provide us uh, information about what was out there and we could uh, know how best to execute the construction of the project. So we're still waiting to hear from the state. We really don't expect that we're going to bid this project before May or June. So, so what you've seen are the 35 projects you've seen two complete and then 33 others that are in some form or fashion five are being done essentially by NCDOT eight were in the preliminary planning engineering stage ten are in design or at the end of the design phase and then we've got nine in construction with several of those uh, nearing completion so with that I'll entertain any questions Next to last, the slide right before that, I saw something I was going to ask about. Oh, the multimodal transit facility. Where that is, uh, the, it's, uh, the environmental reports for the multimodal facility have been uh, completed and submitted to the Federal Transportation Administration. And once the Federal uh, Transportation Administration has concurred with the environmental reports, we can go out and program funds for the design. And remember, that was one that was tied up relative to a legal question and on right. the ability to use the property. John, would you report on that, please? Yes, sir. Uh, it had appears to have been approved by the federal government uh, for it to be simple to come into the city's name with the trail and that particular piece of land. And we uh, actually have paid, I believe, Ron, an X amount of money because you have to reimburse them from costs. I want to say it's $10,000. And they're in the process now of actually uh, producing the documents to give us clear title to it. We haven't got a timeline on that, but uh, we feel good that that's going to actually all come into the city's name in fee simple. And that was house the bus station, I mean the commercial bus station. Have you heard anything about the bus station in Jacksonville? No. The, the commercial bus station? No. Have you I have heard? I've heard something, but I can't definitively say. Yeah. So. Remember. And remember, uh, this is a project that we're certainly not suggesting we're going to be building in a year or two, but it, it potentially could be the site of Fire Station 5, filling in that donut hole, you know, several years out. It could be uh, the trailhead. It could be a, you know, support the, the trail. It could also be multimodal for taxis, for the transit, for the uh, trailways. Uh, it's a Greyhound or Drillways, which is left. <laughs> and then also the M track. Mm -hmm. so. Let's move now, if we can, to the projects that we're proposing in, in this coming fiscal year, FY15, and then also new projects, please. Thank you. Good evening. Um, and as Greg has pointed out, we've already kind of gone over the 14 projects, so we're just going to briefly recap and remind everybody what the capital improvement plan consists of. It is a five-year planning window. 
The current fiscal year identifies the anticipated expense that staff believes the project's going to incur, and in the outlying years of the future fiscal years are planning years. It allows staff some more um, opportunity to look at the projects in more detail. The CIP shows the cost and expenditure estimates, identifies probable sources of financing, evaluates and prioritizes, as well as schedules these projects. This is a comparison of the projects over that we've had over the last three years, and for the most part, they've stayed pretty consistent. And out of the FY15 project, there have there's 16 new projects, and of these 80 projects that are shown, a lot of them are continued continuations from the FY14. They're just carryover or multi-year projects. And as Greg mentioned, he's already kind of brought you up to speed on the status of the project, so I'm going to focus more on maybe if the costs have significantly increased or decreased or if there's any, um, any new developments in the project other than what Greg's already mentioned. So on this particular slide, you can see the Clio Can Do Sewer Rehabilitation Project. Initially in the prior CIP, this was an ongoing project that was already scheduled to be done this current fiscal year. Staff evaluated and actually found out that there was a section of sewer along Palm Drive that we identified that the need for re rehab was more of the accessibility and not such the actual condition of the sewer. So in speaking with Pete Deaver and Lines Maintenance, we were able to remove that section of sewer. He's going to um, <coughs> clear the, the easement, easement and perform the necessary improvements with his operating budget. In addition, we've identified that we can, instead of doing full replacement, we can do lining and point repair. So this project, which now has an overall project budget of $158,000, it was reduced by $816,000. Before you leave that slide, uh, let's, uh, I know that you like to be kept abreast of the public safety facility where we are on the contingency fund for that. If you will recall, we generally had a little over a million dollars in the contingency fund. We still feel very good. We're in about the 650, 675 range. That's a good place to be when you're in a building that is already dried in, windows, you know, for all practical purposes. Uh, we, unless something really unexpected happens, uh, we feel like that contingency fund will not be fully spent. Wally, I know you've been handling that. Can you add any other comments? One of the largest challenges we had with that project is the site work. A lot of the site work has been done, at least the prep. We do still have some in-ground work along the front of the building, along Marine Boulevard. There's some bollards that go in that have a substantial footing. So that's one of the things that we're going to be watching for uh, soil and the soil types. So that's, the site is really the biggest thing that we worry about during a project. So being so far along in the site work, we're pretty comfortable that we won't expend all of those funds. I will also make one other comment. While we had a lot of difficulty with Gant Huberman to start off with, uh, Harvey Gant is to be commended and Alan Hunter are to be commended. Once that side of that architectural firm took control of that project, uh, things changed substantially. And at the end, we're certainly going to thank Mr. Gant for his personal involvement. Yes. You mentioned about the contingency fund, <coughs> million dollars and six fifty, six fifty to the good. Uh, we've spent the million. We spent about six hundred and fifty. Okay. So right. that I guess that would be to the bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But that does include some things like underground power along Court Street. That was a pretty pretty substantial portion that wasn't in when the budget was laid out. That wasn't in the actual <coughs> contract cost for that project. So in rerouting the power, we had to go underground. So that was a cost that we didn't expect. So it's, it's more than just, you know, we ran in, the, the largest piece is still the soil. We ran into several hundred thousand dollars worth of contaminated soil that had to be hauled to the landfill. Well, how was the power to be brought in overhead? It, it was overhead and it had to be rerouted. So in rerouting, it was routed underground, but we had to pay for a I portion of that. Understand. That was Duke that we paid for that. But we paid Duke yeah, directly. It wasn't, wasn't the contractor that's building the building. It was our desire to underground utilities and, and our need to pay Duke to do that. 
utilities had to be relocated. It was, if you're relocating them, you relocate them underground. Thank you. <clears throat> Then there will have been no no change in price on the downtown central stormwater phase one the piney green water system phase one in this current cip we actually split this project that was identified in 14 as to two separate projects so phase one is the continuation of extending the water line from wolf swamp road to almost near piney green and then we've set up a phase two which will start looping phase one along Piney Green to Marine Boulevard to create the backbone for the water system in this area. No change in price, we just split it out into two separate projects. And as Greg mentioned with uh, the Parkwood Regional Lift Station and Force Main, that project, because we are looking for an alternative route than what we've previously identified going through Burton Park, um, as we initially intended, this project cost, other than being pushed out, has also increased $2.1 million. The Brookview Force Main, as Greg mentioned, the, the overall budget as of now hasn't changed because we anticipate reducing the scope of that project and doing a rehab versus, in a re versus a replacement. And the Barn Street Sewer re re um, Replacement Project went up just a little bit due to inflation a small number relative to the overall cost of the project. The NC24 Lejeune Boulevard Trail, that project price has increased because we have, in prior, last year's CIP, we broke out phase one and phase two as two separate projects. And this year we've recombined the projects um, because we know that we're executing the agreement with DOT for that additional funding. So we've put it, we've recombined it into one project. But the overall price um, obviously hasn't changed just combining the two projects. Northeast Creek Phase 2, we were able to reduce the overall project price by $427,000. And that reduction is a result of ident identifying alternative means of procuring dirt other than purchasing it. And we're on track for um, closing out the lagoons, which is now fa this phase, the end of this fiscal year. Uh, just a, a side comment on that. If you have not been to Northeast Creek, I would encourage you to go by. I would not encourage you to drive off the road because it's no. still pretty late. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I have to publicly thank uh, Deanna for the work that she has done. Because of the fact that, a, that one city staff person aggressively took that project and worked with local contractors, we found that we were able to get well over a half a million dollars worth of dirt free. If you go out there and look at the massive size of those two lagoons now that all the vegetation has been cleared from them and they've now been filled, it's truly amazing how large that area is. Just to give you an idea, if you think of the JASA softball, uh, the, the JASA soccer complex, you could build that complex 50% larger and still not fill up the cells that you now have created for future recreation opportunity. But again, primary purpose of saying this is that young lady sitting there is the one who really got this project going and saved the city well over a half a million dollars by negotiating with individual contractors who were digging retention facilities for others, needed to get rid of their dirt. She <laughs> negotiated a huge amount of free hauling and free, and free dirt. It's pretty well done. It's pretty slick. Thank Good Deanna. job, Deanna. Thank you. Deanna. <laughs> I'm willing to negotiate your next appointment agreement. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that completes the the projects that were carried over from FY14. So now we get into the interesting. What are the new projects for that are scheduled to start either design, construction, in 15? Um, and in these projects, we've, um, we've obviously it's the carryover of 180,000 for the FY15 sidewalk installation, and we'll be working with the MPO to identify the areas that we're going to be um, addressing for that project. In FY14's CIP, the inflow and infiltration project, we kind of lumped that as one massive project that basically would would you have one year design, one year for construction, then the following year for design, construction, etc. 
So in order for us to not have a one continuous project, we've split this out. The dollars haven't changed, we've just divided it out into um, multi-year projects. So you'll see this project and a future project that's um, 17, 18, et cetera. And a new project that um, the staff has identified as an automated step screen at the LTS and the FY15 street rehabilitation. And both of those projects, we're gonna go into a little bit more detail um, as a preparation for the 15 CIP. Obviously what you see is not what's currently at the LTS, but for discussion purposes, this gives us an idea to discuss. And, and just for, you know, getting away from the, uh, <laughs> the letters, land treatment site, yes, thank the you. land application site, where we get rid of our waste water. Thank you very much. Uh, currently at the land treatment site, they have one bar screen, which is um, what we have identified as current. And then they also have a bar screen, I mean a step screen, that's what's proposed. Right now they have them, I don't know, side by side. They've got two. And what we, what staff realized is that the current bar screen that we have is undersized and insufficient to handle the peak flows. And so as a result, staff is requesting us to replace the bar screen and with a step screen. And it's just that where you can see that the, on the, they've got the bars and there's a mechanical arm that comes down and, and lifts the, the waste away or the, the particles away versus the step screen, which I've equated as an escalator that would carry everything up and then automatically um, deposit the waste on the other side. So this is a new project that staff is currently looking at. We will, um, it's scheduled for design and construction. So as we go through the next fiscal year, we'll be looking at what the options are and, and if we can, you know, probably refine the scope a little bit as well as the cost. These are kind of some swag numbers um, to get us for discussion purposes. Yeah, the current system was designed by Clemson engineers and NC State engineers. <laughs> The FY15 Street Rehabilitation Project, we're looking at um, doing the rehab on Winchester Road, Nottingham Road, Hyatt Circle, Zach Circle, Ramona Avenue, New Bridge Street, and we've added Huff Drive, which is a change from the last year's CIP. Now, these streets do not include the work that Johnny does with his operating budget rehabilitating and overlaying other, other streets. These are the projects that we've identified that are more of the, the um, worse streets that require a little bit more work to be done on them. I'd like to, uh, just uh, talking about the uh, land treatment place, you know, when we had the, uh, uh, all of those learned professors from NC State come out and, and talk about uh, our pH problems that we were having out there, there was some, some they identified some issues on, on how we moved, moved waters around. Has all of that been been done have we we budgeted for that and I'm, taken care of those and i'm so glad you asked that <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a little bit ahead you're, of yes us. you're just a little ahead but yes um staff at at the land treatment site we have put that in as new projects in this year's cip they're in future years yes. we'll have to look at them and refine the scope a little better but yes we have included those recommendations anything and out of that report, I would like to say that TR and his staff have done a very good job of anything that did not cost, was not a capital expenditure they have already implemented. So it's programming the things that have significant cost to them now. They've already changed some of the species of the trees to plant, haven't they? We are, we've actually done some test plots. Um, eucalyptus, I don't remember all of them. I'm not a, a tree person. But there was about five or six different species that they did test plots on. And the eucalyptus, and there was a, I think it was a green ash, did very well. And they like wet soil, which we have a lot of. So those are two of the species that we will be replanting with. There's a decent pine. market for those kind of trees at maturity? Yes, the, the ash tree actually will give you six times revenue per acre than the current loblaws. Is that right? Yes. yes. Now, the eucalyptus is actually a new tree for this area. Normally, eucalyptus can't grow this far north, but through hybrid uh, uh, scientific technology at NC State, they have figured how to get a lot of things growing that wouldn't otherwise grow, but we won't go there. <laughs> but what we do know is this. Eucalyptus makes an extremely beneficial mulch. 
It is used uh, significantly in the Florida market where you have uh, fire ants and you have termites and so forth. We believe that eucalyptus could become a real, uh, pardon the expression, cash cow for the city. They grow extremely, I don't guess you can say extremely rapidly, that would be bad. <laughs> they grow very quickly. And uh, literally, I mean, they will reach maturity of 40, 50 feet in just a uh, eight to 10 year period. So we think that uh, we, we should be seriously looking at converting a lot of it to eucalyptus. And they do grow uh, in very wet soils. One of the panel members, Dr. Frederick from NC State, we actually bring him down, I think, twice a year and have him go over our progress and look at, and he's the one that's actually working with our floor store to recommend the, the tree species that we're replanting. We have about, I think it was 70 acres we're getting ready to replant. And I will also say to you, uh, it's not a surprise, we've done very little harvesting this year and we've done very little control burning. Mm -hmm. And that's because it's just been so very, right. very wet. But uh, we, once it begins to dry, we are encouraging you all to have a workshop out there to actually see. Uh, you will find that the concerns that uh, you had are being very well addressed and that the mortality issues are being reversed. The uh, percolation by ripping the soil and so forth, we've come up with a lot of good, good approaches. And it is self-funding. The biggest improvement we've seen is daylighting. We've actually gone back into our laterals and cut what's grown into the laterals back. And that allows, you know, the wind to blow through so the water transpires quicker than it previously did. So that's been the single, along with the ripping, that's been the single biggest improvement we've seen. Continuing along with our um, new FY15 projects, the median improvements along Western Boulevard, that's really a placeholder as of now. We haven't identified any, any potential contracts with DOT. The Park Lane and Stratford Water and Sewer Rehab Rehabilitation Project, this is a new project for FY15, and we're going to talk about it in a little bit more detail next, along with the FY15 water line replacement. That is for design and construction of Greencrest Circle. And the Plantation Boulevard and New Frontier Way extension, um, the FY15 cost allows us to start some preliminary planning work to identify how we can make that improvement. So the Park, Park Lane and Stratford Waterline Rehab Project, we have over in this area, you've got the, um, um, the cemetery. And you've got Freedom Fountain up at the top here. And so this project, we're looking at replacing the water and sewer along all the way down Stratford and continuing to Park Lane over to Gene Circle. So as you can see, this is a very large project and obviously a residential area. The estimate that we've provided includes the full replacement of both water and sewer. Our preliminary investigation appears that we might be able to do point repair and lining and if that's the case the overall project cost is anticipated to be um, significantly reduced so this this project will start design this year with construction in the following year the fy15 water line replacement project this includes um, it's just, we've got richlands highway this is the, um, the big gas station as you're heading towards richlands this is Onslow grading and paving. This, the 15 water line project includes the replacement of the water line along Green Crest Circle from one side to the next. This replacement will take an old galvanized line and replace it with a six inch PVC. New service connections, replacement of all the meter setters, and we'll also be including two fire hydrants to meet spacing requirements and to improve fire protection. And this is a design and construction in FY15. And just briefly, these are some of the projects that we've added to the entire CIP, and I've put them in order for you. So we've got uh, the we've got the specialized effluent pump at the LTS and the effluent transfer station and piping improvements out at the land treatment site, which are the projects that were mentioned earlier as a result of the panel. We've got uh, the fiber <coughs> connectivity, which is a new project, the Half Moon Creek water and sewer project, 
and we're looking at um, improvements to the Holiday City Mobile Home Park lift station. Now, the projects that we have listed here have been identified as needs or um, improvements by staff, and that we haven't, we meaning um, engineering and management, haven't spent a great deal of time really refining the scope of work. What we're looking at is it's kind of on our radar, it's in the planning years, and as we begin to move through the CIP process, we start refining and looking at these projects in a lot more detail. And this is the continuation of the, the latter years. Here's the Piney Green Water System Phase 2 that I mentioned earlier. We've got, we're looking at the Kerr Street Fishing Pier, the Commons Tennis Courts, and improvements at Liberty Drive Improvement, or Liberty Drive Improvements. So with that, we're, this is just an opportunity as the, what the draft CAPs that's presented to council, any additional council workshops as needed to discuss the projects in more detail. We need to verify the funding and project management capability. And then from there, we would finalize the CIP process, and then we would go through that process um, with the, the budget process for adoption and approval by move, June. Move back one slide, if you would, please. Okay. Uh, Mr. Willingham, I know that you were specific, specifically interested in the uh, fishing pier expansion. Uh, as we actually work closer with the uh, permitting agencies, we may be able to move that forward where it won't actually be 19. We're putting those that we really don't know what the real schedule is. We wanted to get them in the CIP, but just because it's in 19 doesn't mean that's the year it'll be built. If we're able to move it forward, either because of permitting becoming easier or funding becoming more available, we would do that. <clears throat> These that are almost all shown as 19 are simply given a year because we can't really project at this time when they would be built. We just wanted to get them in the CIP because those are priorities that council members have asked to get in there. Same thing, uh, Ms. Washington, with the uh, Country Club Park. Uh, again, it's there as a placeholder showing you that it is in the five-year program. As we develop the program more fully, you will see it change the year schedule. The Commons Tennis Court there, is that a, rema a redo or is that additional? No, it's, it's, it's maintenance on Maintenance on the carpet. <coughs> mm -hmm. what, what has happened on that particular thing is, uh, if, now tell me if I remember, <laughs> if I remember correctly, the, the, the tennis courts were apparently uh, poured as one large slab, or at least as very large slabs. We're beginning to have cracking in those slabs because the new technique would have been to pour them in a series of slabs rather than one. Is that, mm -hmm. did I say that correctly? You do well. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, we are looking at how we address that cracking issue over there. One other that I, I would mention that I know you've been very interested in, you, uh, we did not talk about the Jack M. Yet. We're very pleased to tell you that the new ball field going in in Jack M. Yet, uh, have you awarded the bid yet? Mm -hmm. Yep, the Jack M. Yet, we've actually divided it out into three phases. So um, Blizzard Construction was awarded the demolition and the construction of the new ball field. So both the demo, everything is kind of come to a, a standstill because of the weather, but they are working on that, that project. And we also received bids for the new lights that are going out there, and we're under, under um, the contract process now for for that. So so far we're you know we're, in, within budget for the overall project for, for Jackie Miet. I have a question. You I believe you said that. Um, Jacksonville Landing was supposed to be finished by September. Mm -hmm. I was just curious. Uh, in the improvement plan, it has four hundred and thirty-eight thousand, but it's in two thousand eighteen. That's for the visitor center. Okay. Yeah. We would encourage you to, uh, you know, have some nice uh, evening reading by continuing to look at your CIP. <laughs> Sorry, I have a question. Yes, sir. Regarding the park and ride, is that that money that's set aside? Is that for planning? <clears throat> yes, we have to. Thousand? You have to go through the hoops to get FTA to approve it. So it's just like we've that's, done. Those with are the planning dollars. 
Well, it's it's going to be spent on planning. It's money that comes out of the FDA. Right. For, yes. for the planning of the parking lot. Yeah, we can we can designate what we're going to use it for, right. and that's what we're first step. One last thing that I would uh, ask. Uh, this was a, a little unusual format that we had this evening because we really blended, if I may use that term, uh, normal workshop items and normal city council agenda items. Uh, from time to time, if you feel comfortable with this, we would like to continue this format, but we would appreciate feedback over the next week or so as to whether you like this format of blending the work or whether you would prefer to have two distinct meetings that evening rather than, than blend. That's great. That'll have a problem with myself. I don't either. I like it. Okay. Thank you very much for your courtesy. Anybody got anything else before we adjourn? <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor, signify. Say it out.